Hello, everyone. John Thomas here with the HomeSalesForce.com team, brokered by EXP Realty, coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. In a moment, we're going to start uh, a presentation uh, from a couple of uh, my friends and business partners, Denny Faircloth and Robin Kim Campbell, who are bringing to us uh, Venny uh, Sosito, I believe is the pronunciation of his name. He was the uh, coach for Century 21 for the entire state of California before joining EXP Realty. And uh, he will be uh, talking today about how to work our way through the current um, market and beyond. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be coming to you shortly. All right. All right, guys. I'm Denny Faircloth. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And I'm joined by my mentors, uh, Rob and Kim Campbell. Uh, if you guys don't know Robin Kim, you're in for a treat. Uh, when I first uh, met Robin Kim, you know they were leading literally hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs all over the world, mentoring people on how to be business owners. And uh, I personally, my background is in uh, real estate investing and uh, in a networking event. And uh, I didn't know they had anything to do with uh, real estate at all. I just knew they were uber successful and. You know, they look the part, they walk the part, they talk the part. And uh, over some time as I got to know them, what I discovered literally blew my mind. Uh, Rob and Kim were both the number one broker owners in the world for Remax. Now, I don't know about you, but Remax is not exactly a tiny little brokerage. So uh, I think, you know, the top 100 would have been an accomplishment out of thousands of franchises. But number one, I mean, come on. So these guys had... 15 offices, hundreds of agents, billions in sales, mortgage company, sinographics company, title company, insurance company. I always joke, if they were sponsors at my networking event, they would need seven different tables for all of the businesses within real estate. So um, anyway, I was very humbled to uh, have the opportunity to work with these guys. So uh, Rob and Kim are going to share kind of with us kind of what happened you know, in the industry, they've been around for 25 years. So they built the biggest brokerage in Remax, you know, top volume, top recruiting, top agents, top everything survived, not just survived the crash, but really went on to thrive in the crash and not just personally, but mentor a lot of other agents too on how to, you know, shift with the marketplace. And today we're going through another shift. So they're going to talk to us about kind of what that looked like and how we can apply that to our businesses today. Uh-oh. Did Denny, Denny freeze for a second? Rose. You gotta love technology. That's you know? all right, that's, that's all right. That's part of the game. <laughs> Just like strike a post. So, so for those of you who don't know uh, Denny. Oh, there you go. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we lost you there for a minute, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, I was just saying, speaking of quarantined, I have four young kids under the age of six. So they are all here at my house driving me absolutely mad all day long. So Rob called me like, did you get the link for the Zoom? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't looked at my phone all morning. I'm a homeschool teacher right now. So fortunately, my wife was able to take over and I was able to join you guys. So I'm super stoked. Uh, thanks, Rob and Kim, for joining us. And I'm really looking forward to meeting our guest speaker today. Sounds good. Well, thanks, Denny. And for those of you who don't know Denny, he's, he and his uh, business partner founded uh, uh, Investor Blueprint, which teaches people how to uh, invest in investment properties, fix and flips and things like that. Very successful trainers and coaches in that arena. Uh, and also, they created a mastermind group for the real estate industry in Atlanta, and they've been having meetups for the industry for years, very successful meetups uh, in the Atlanta area for industry leaders to get together and mastermind. And how many years have you been doing that, Denny? Uh, October will be our 10th anniversary. So we're super stoked. We're bummed right now because no one's allowed to be around anyone. So it's hard to have a mastermind or an event. But we generally get about 500 real estate professionals a month to that event. Yeah. Uh, humble beginnings to now what I what arguably is probably one of the largest regular. I mean, it's every month. It's like throwing a wedding every month because, right. you know, with hundreds of people, it's a big ordeal. So we love it. But most most of all, we just love connecting people. Yes. yes. And they, they've been fantastic at doing that. And and uh, also uh, started his own uh, real estate uh, venture and real estate group and very successful with uh, with Dash Real Estate Group. So 
So uh, Danny is uh, very uh, successful in the real estate industry as well and glad to be partnering together. Well, before I introduce our special guest today, uh, last week we talked about the industry and what's going on. And for a long time, I've been talking to agents for a couple of years now, talking to agents. Hey, be prepared because there's a shift coming. Be prepared because there's a shift coming. And just like in 08, agents are going, ah, nah, it's great. Everything's running great. But when you're self-employed, when you're running your own business, everything is great until it's not. (laughs) And so we have a scenario here where we're going through another shift. And fortunately, the the, uh, gentleman that's going to be speaking here in just a second uh, is a survivor like us. Kim and I went through the tech crash. We went through the 08 crash. Uh, and survived, and uh, here we are in another changing market. And here's the thing for us. We like to stay up on what's going on daily in the industry of real estate because that's what, uh, what's going to help agents survive. And one thing that helped us survive back in the 08 crash is helping agents to position themselves uh, when things were going crazy to do the things they needed to do to be successful coming out of it and to know what's going on in the industry. Um, just like today, I was looking on, uh, I follow Inman News for a lot of real estate news and, and keep up on what's going on. And I saw some key things that were happening. I mean, last week I went over a few, but here's one that really jumped out at me. Zillow said there's no coronavirus playbook. So they are cutting 25% of their expenses, cutting uh, hiring, cutting marketing, uh, halting home buying. Uh, uh, reducing discretionary spending. They're just cutting things to be able to survive. Now, Zillow was the big gorilla for a long time, and now they're having to do some cutbacks, and they haven't been through anything like this before uh, at their size and scale yet. This is new for them. Now, who else are also started to shift? I mean, you had uh, a Redfin Open Door Offer Pad. Heard of those guys? Yeah. Rheology, all of them decided to suspend Spend their iBuying programs. All right, so iBuying program was the biggest, latest, and greatest thing to change the industry, right? right? They just shut them all down. Well, things are changing, and that brings the spotlight back to real estate agents, correct? I mean, even uh, Compass had a, a thing saying they're they're laying off 15% of their staff. I mean, immediately just cutting 15% of their staff right off the bat. That's over 300 and something employees that they're cutting. 374, so, I think it was. Yeah. So so things are changing rapidly in the industry. In the meanwhile, um, in our company, EXP, we just hit 28,000 right. agents. So everybody right. going that way, we going this right. way, so right. this approved. Right, right. So, so another thing that I saw in the industry is uh, silver linings. Okay, what are some silver linings? What are some things you can be doing? This, this article talked about uh, six positive outcomes that can happen because of this market change. And they're geared around putting the spotlight back on the real estate professional. Yes. That's yes. right. We've been uh, fighting for this. How yes. about five steps to, sex, to, to a successful virtual listing presentation? All right. Okay. Well, there are agents out there that have been doing virtual real estate presentations for years. Mm-hmm. There are agents out there that have been doing virtual buyer presentations for years. And some people are saying, oh, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. You need to get, there's only way to do it is to get face to face. Okay. That may be the case. The best way to do it is get face to face. But when you can't, what do you do? Right. Yeah. Well, you have to be able to shift and change. But there are a lot of people that have already been successful doing listing presentations virtually. Well, what are some people having to do now? Adjust. Like uh, last week, this is so funny. Uh, I saw in some of my social media groups from from uh, from uh, some certain cities I won't name. They were having an agent training class to teach agents how to use Zoom. <laughs> okay, <laughs> using Zoom for close to ten years now, ten years right? Now, yeah. Very successful. We've been talking to people worldwide through this Zoom platform and Uh leveraging our home-based operations to run that and grow that. And a lot of agents have just had blinders on doing business the old way for so long that they had no idea that there was a way to do business and to communicate and to talk and to to collaborate through a virtual platform like Zoom. And so things are changing. 
And one of the great things that I like about this is we can have guest people come on and talk who have who have been through changing markets and successfully navigated them. So the gentleman I want to introduce now, uh, Vinny uh, Cicido out of uh, uh, California, this gentleman was a top trainer with Century 21 in California. So some of my East Coast friends would say, well, Century 21 well, in the East Coast wasn't that big. Out in West Coast, Century 21 was a big deal. So, so this gentleman coached Century 21 agents for close to 20 years or more and very successful, survived the 08 crash and actually thrived through the 08 crash, made a lot of money, taught, taught a lot of agents how to make money. Now he's doing the same thing, helping to coach agents through this changing time on what they need to be doing. So, uh, so uh, Vinny, if you can kind of come on and let's talk about some of the things that you're doing now or what you're teaching agents to do now to be prepared in this shift. What, the, what, what should they be doing now? What could they be doing now to be prepared to capture large segments of the market coming out of this? Right. Well, uh, I think the most important thing is for people to get very real with, with what's happening. How has your business been affected? Offices are shutting down, buyers are backing down, investors are saying, I'm going to wait. And so things are changing. And if you're not monitoring the market and you're not tracking how many homes on the market, what's changed in the last two weeks, how's the inventory now compared to the last two weeks, you have to learn to do reports to, to adapt and learn about the market on a weekly basis. So you're noticing the changes as they're coming. And if you're doing that, you will be, be able to adapt faster to the changes because you see it shifting if the inventory is increasing and what's happening. So people who used to do open houses can't do open houses anymore. Now you have to do virtual tours. Now you have to do specific uh, different ways to get that out. Now more than ever, you need to be on social media adapting to what's happening. So you got to start doing open houses online. You got to start doing different things that are going to change. If the way of going out and getting business was door knocking, you can't door knock anymore. No one's going to open the door. It's not going to work. You're not supposed to be out there. So you have to make the change. Now you have to start um, marketing yourself on social media. You have to start using what we use out here is uh, lion's desk. We send mass blasts to past clients, fear of influence, people we know, friends and neighbors. And so you have to start going on social media, Instagram. If you weren't a big Instagram user, you better become. You have to start uh, creating your own channel. You have to start doing things to adapt to the changes. Now, if you're not real with what's happening, you'll be left behind and you'll go spiraling downward. And that's going to cost you a lot of money and could send you back to your old job, which is what happened in the last time. So my wife just told me this morning, wow, it seems like you're working more now than you were before. And that's absolutely right. Yes. You have to work more now. It's more important to have a strategic plan that you must execute. You have to have a strict schedule that you stick by and you have to continue doing your prospecting. So if it was normal for you to make 30 contacts a day, now you got to do 70. Now you got to do 80. Now you got to be on the phone all day. So there are different things that you have to do to adapt to the changes. People ask me, where do you see this going? We don't know where it's going, but a lot has happened fast. We weren't used to this, so you have to adapt. And if you notice on social media, there's either two things happening, a lot of negativity about what's happening or the people that are being positive and moving forward with it. You're either one or the other. you got to ask yourself, which one are you? And you have to surround yourself with people like this, with Danny, with Kim and Rob, with people who are going to support and push forward in the storm. You know, it's very important. Yeah, so what we've seen is, just like what you said, agents have to adapt and change. And the ones that don't are, are, are not going to be set up to capture this market coming out of it. And many of them are going to get out of the business. One of the craziest things is we saw agents in the last crash in 08, we saw agents uh, getting long-time career agents leaving the industry because they were so focused on doing business one way, they couldn't pivot and shift. Their income went down. They left the industry. However, we saw brand new agents getting into the real estate industry back then succeeding. Why? Because they did things differently. They were doing, they were going to where the market was and working in that marketplace. And so for like, just like many said, 
you got to be on social media. You got to become the expert. You got to put yourself out there as the expert in the industry because just like what I read in these articles, if if the shift is going to be back to the agents and the expertise and the knowledge that you have of not only the industry, but the communities and helping guide them through these tough times, you got to capture your share of the business. Well, how do you do that? Social media is big because you need to put it out there that you're in the business. You're still working. You're active. You realize that many clients and customers that were your clients and customers in the past, if you don't communicate with them, They'll think you're out of business. If you communicate with them, just like Vinny said, phone calls, touching base with them, just to see how they're doing, checking in with them, seeing what their situation is. Their situation may be changing. You're going to have people that are kind of going to come out of this and they're going to need to sell their house. Maybe they got a better job somewhere else because the company laid off and is now hiring and they're able to, 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 to move and get a better job. They got to sell their house. Maybe you got clients and customers who need to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to figure out a different way to, to structure their homes and things like that. So we need to figure out how to change that and tweak that in our business platform. And so what you said is right on Vinny. So tell me some of the things that you're teaching some of your agents specifically now to say when they're talking to their the clients and customers. So the big thing that I have uh, agents doing is they're kind of shifting towards the attention of what's happening right now. There have been a lot of refinances going on. Get yeah. into that. Start helping people with that. Be resourceful. Help your clients. Help the people that you know uh, by giving them a, a, a lot of information. That's a perfect reason to call them is to give them the information of guys. Even though this is happening, the banks are being flexible with people. Call them, explain your situation. If you've been affected by the coronavirus situation and they stop working and you're out, people are concerned. They think they're going to lose their property. They're afraid how they're going to make their next payment. A lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. And so if you give them the information that Chase and Wells Fargo and B of A are working programs out there, working out forbearance plans for people to be able to push, push their payments back three months if they have to and not be affected by it on their credit or not be uh, penalized. People need to know that. And there's not enough information out there to let people know. Maybe your car payment can be put on on the back end also. Everyone's willing to work with people. Some of us that have rentals know that the tenants are not going to be able to pay the, the rent. We have to adjust just like everyone's going to have to adjust. And the banks are already telling us that they're willing to. That's that's major. That is critical because when you're calling your past clients in sphere of influence, if you can give them information that can help them, not necessarily say, hey, you're going to sell your house. No. Hey, what is your situation? Here's what you could be doing. If you're if you're in a situation where you might not be able to make your home payment, call your bank and let them know. Just like you said, if you call them ahead of time, they'll work something out. And, and, and hey, will this affect my credit? So make sure that they do something that's going to help you, but not affect your credit going forward. And they'll work with you because what we're seeing is this is probably not going to be a long drawn out thing. Right. It's probably going to correct itself fairly soon once we get through this lockdown period. And when that happens, we're going to have some opportunities that we're going to need to, to work with right away, like clients that need to list their home that have been holding off. The spring market has been holding off because of this. There's going to be a pent up demand of people that were wanting to sell their homes anyway. They're going to want to come on the marketplace. You're going to have people that need to sell their homes. Maybe they are in a situation where they did lose their job and they can't afford the home they're in. They're going to have to sell. That's going to come on the marketplace. People that are going to possibly be moving for new job opportunities, that's going to be taking place. You've got people that left New York City to go somewhere else. Maybe they decided to leave permanently. Who knows? So you've got situations where people are going to want to sell their homes, and being in front of them during that time to, to take care of their needs is perfect. Next thing is we're going to probably see a uh, – a, a situation, and this is this is just my opinion. This is what I'm seeing, and this this may happen. I'll, I'll be happy to get to Vinny's input on this. I'm going to see. We're, we're probably going to have a flood of people wanting to sell their homes after this is is, is calming down. So we're going to have a lot more inventory on the market than we're normally used to. But then on the buyer side, for a period of time, and I don't know how long this time is going to be, 
buyers are going to be golden in this industry because the, the, the people who can get qualified are going to be gold. The buyers that can get qualified, that, that had their jobs, that have no lapse in employment, that are, that are clean, that the banks don't have to figure out how to handle that, uh, that extra time off that they had to take because of this. The ones that are clean and can get qualified, they're going to be gold and they're going to be able to go out there and buy out some homes pretty good. So we're going to have a period of time where it's probably going to shift for a minute to a buyer's market. And so I don't know how long that's going to be, but that's just my guess on what I'm going to see when we come out of this. Vinny, can you want to talk to the, about that a little bit? What do you think? You know, I agree with you 100%. And that's the conversation that I was having with the people that I was coaching. And I have been coaching is I'm telling them, you know, if you identify what's changing in the market, if you see the inventory growing, you know, this is going to be a buyer's market. It's going to change, maybe not fast, but it's going to happen in the next few months. Like you said, a lot of people are going to have to sell. Some of these businesses that are stopping right now on the, on the operations are not going to bounce back. They're not going to be able to stay afloat. So those people are going to have, they're going to lose their job. They're going to have to sell. So you're going to have short sales. You're going to have a bunch of stuff hitting the market and you have to be prepared. And if you follow that, then you ride the wave on the buyer market. Right now it's a listing market, but it's shifting gradually. You got to be ready for it. And you make the adjustment the moment you see it. If we wait till we hear it from the news, it's going to be three months late. Correct. That's right. You got to be prepared for it now. So that's when you're talking to your clients, prepare them for uh, putting their home on the market ahead of time, prepare them for getting pre-qualified. Imagine if you had your potential buyers that want to buy when this is all over with already pre-qualified and ready to go. What if they've been already looking at what's out there, seeing the markets they want, they've narrowed down the area they want to be in, and they're just waiting for the homes to pop up. So being prepared for this could be huge, but also just being an, a, a resource for your clients and customers because then they, they know that you're the experience in the industry. That brings them back to the agent's side. And that's what we want to see in this marketplace. We want to use this and leverage this time for them to see agents as the go-to resource in the marketplace to help us through this time. So, Denny, what are you seeing in Atlanta, Georgia with the agents that you're working with uh, on this? Well, uh, first, I, I love what you said earlier, Vinny, and I have a little um, kind of a catchphrase I use all the time, and that is that people either uh, they either make it happen, watch it happen, or they wonder what happened. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that are going to be wondering what happened after this is all over with. Um, to your point, Rob, you know I love my numbers. And the National Association of Realtors during the last crash went from 1.4 million members to 900,000. So yep. half a million agents quit. Yep. And uh, the good news for all of you who are committed to you know, shifting with the market and staying in the business is that while, uh, whether it's short term or long term, while transactions may be down, competition is going to be down too. So you really, uh, like Benny said, you have a, an opportunity to work harder now than ever to position yourself to take advantage of that. So one of the things that I'm doing here in Atlanta, Rob, and, and this works anywhere, and, and this is right in the same vein you guys are talking about being a resource for people. Uh, I want to take that a step further and say, you don't just need to be a resource within the real estate industry. And, and yeah, you can help people with refis. You can help them get pre-qualified. You can help them, you know, keep up to date on the market and kind of what's going on. But one of the things I've done is I've just tried to take my content creation on social media and up the volume because people are on their devices more now than they ever have been. So uh, I'm actually creating a private, uh, a totally free 21-day live video challenge where I'm going to be teaching agents how to create engaging content that gets more reach and that has people like it and comment and share and interact with it. The challenge is most people just, they don't know how to create content. They don't know how to set up a studio. They don't know how to use a phone. They don't know how to use lighting. They don't know about the algorithms and how those work. And then if they do have all that technical stuff and they manage to get through the weeds of that, they look at the camera and they go, oh shit, what am I going to say? <laughs> I think we lost Diddy there for a second. 
<laughs> but yeah, he's right about that. The content, if you can put content online and get people looking at it right now, that is exactly what you need to be doing. Because when you're putting content online, they see you as a business professional. They see you active in the industry. You know, leveraging tools like in EXP, every agent gets a KV core system included in their platform. You can run a listing through the KV core system, put it up on social media and drive traffic back to you as well. You can be doing open houses on video walkthroughs. And here's a little uh, interesting tip that, uh, that uh, someone we were talking through the other day. And I was telling them, they were saying, hey, should I do a virtual open house? Well, yes, do a virtual open house, but be more detailed than average. If you're doing a virtual open house and you're doing like a FaceTime virtual open house, don't only show them the good things. Don't only show them the nice living room and the awesome kitchen. Show them the, the scuff on the wall. Show them the air conditioning unit, you know? Show them the, the, uh, the, uh, the electrical panel. I mean, things we don't show in normal stuff, but be real, right? Be real with it. Show them the good and the bad of the house because a lot of people will, will say, if, oh, if you're showing me the good and the bad, I feel more confident that I might be able to, to, to make a decision on possibly buying the house, right? I mean, going forward, um, for to survive in any market. I mean, I'm I'm learning a ton from day. Like I do social media, but I hit a mess all the time. And I've been w watching Denny and what he's been teaching. Oh my God, I'm so gonna be a big fan here, Denny. And that's the key is learning to embrace technology. You know, like Zoom, like do, doing what we're doing here. Right. And then and then social media, like how to do videos, how many minutes, and the lighting and all that stuff. So. So I'm going to be the one that going up with uh, Danny's course, you know, <laughs> and get a tech that challenge and, and start doing more live videos. Uh, Vinny, I suggest you and Rob should sign up for Danny's class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I should get in. Um, if you're not already, by the way, the name of uh, my, my real estate Facebook group is Real Estate Connection. So, you know, Vinny, I'd love to have you engage in there. We've got people all over the country. It's all real estate professionals. Um, but that in that course, you know, there's really three things you need to do in a video, and that's just entertain or uh, empower or educate. If you can do at least one of those three things, if someone will laugh at you or if you make them feel good or if you teach them something, then they'll work. They'll, they'll watch it and they'll engage with it. So uh, if you can do that now, the challenge then becomes everybody wants to know, well, you know, what kind of content? And they always focus on real estate, real estate, real estate. I'm doing a series called Don't Survive, Thrive. Hashtag don't survive thrive. And, and all I'm doing is I'm literally just sharing with people like, hey, I've got a homeschool for kids right now. Like, here's the structure. Here's the activities. Here's the things. Because I know other parents. It's like, hey, I'm Denny, your realtor. I've turned into a homeschool teacher. Here's what I'm doing. Or my fitness routines, right? All the gyms are closed. So I'm working out in my uh, garage. So I just kind of share what I'm doing that day. And it's, you know, simple stuff, push-ups, sit-ups lunges, pull-ups, burpees, whatever. It's like, hey, here's some things you can do to create a fitness habit. And I get up at six in the morning to do that because I don't have to put a kid on the bus. And that's the only time because the rest of the day shot, right? So sharing like that, just regular stuff that you think is common sense, it's not common sense to everybody else. But if you can just create a co consistency in uh, door knocking, consistency in cold calling, consistency in anything is what makes it work. So if you can just consistently put yourself out there, adding some kind of value, even if it's your favorite smoothie recipe, like it doesn't matter. Just say, hey, I'm Denny, your realtor. Here's my favorite smoothie. But you're kind of associating yourself with your real estate business. They know you're in real estate, but you're also adding value and it doesn't have to be about a house. So uh, the, really the key is just get creative. Absolutely. Well, and the great thing about it is because everyone on this call is with, uh, with EXP Realty now and. EXP has positioned itself for this type of market because we've been virtual the whole time. So agents were able to continue doing their business. You know, it's funny. I was uh, in the world uh, yesterday because Kim had a closing and we were making sure we had the paperwork that they needed uh, because you don't know in this time they could something could have gone, gone different with, with this marketplace, but it was all closed virtually and everything. And so we were asking the staff, hey, how's everything going there? I'm <laughs> expecting to hear, oh, everything's down. No, they said, we're just as busy as we always have been. 
and uh, we, we're, we're taking care of the clients. We're doing closings. They said, yeah, your closing happened. We're going to immediately fund your closing and direct deposit it to you. I mean, so ev- everything hap- is continuing to happen. And I, and I realized something last week is a lot of real estate companies are having to close their doors. They're having to, to limit interactions. They can't do trainings and coachings. We haven't closed. Mm-hmm. Our, our accounting staff has still been working. Our technology staff has still been working. Our training center. We still have 50 hours of live trainings every week. And they came out with a brand new training series that started this week to help agents learn the skills to survive a changing market. Yeah. Right in our cloud. We've actually invited quite a few non-EXP agents into the world to learn in those classes for free. I mean, if, if you're on this call and you're not with EXP and you want to get access to the world to go to some of those trainings, message whoever invited you to this call and we'll get you a free login, a two-week login to our world. And you can go to the trainings for free. They're absolutely amazing. But things are changing in that industry. I, I saw this article, which was really cool today. It was uh, numbers for last year. This is 2019 numbers. This is before any of this coronavirus happened. And it talked about from the Real Trends 500, who were the top companies in the industry last year? And Home Services of America was once again the top one. They've been that in the last few years, uh, followed by uh, Rheology. Home Service American is Berkshire Hathaway, and they, they bought Long and Foster, Harry Norman, the Dyna, and a bunch of other companies to, co- to collaborate, right? Well, they became, they're the number one in transactions. Number two is Rheology, right? Well, here's the funny thing about this article. Home Service America was number one, Rheology number two. However, both of them, transaction count reduced last year. Both of them, the transaction count was less than it was in 2018. But who was number three in transaction count? EXP Realty. <laughs> EXP Realty transaction count doubled last year. How much? Doubled. It doubled. So it doubled. So we're in number three spot, but our volume, our transaction count doubled. And it even said that most of the companies on the list had a flat line in their growth or declining. And here we are doubling production. So that says, hey, we were already positioned well before this happened. And now the agents that are involved are already continuing growing their business with this platform. So uh, I'd like for uh, Vinny and uh, Denny, could you talk a little bit about uh, about how you see the, the EXP being positioned well for what we're going into next? Yeah, um, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, you know, I was having a conversation with Kim yesterday, and we were talking about what is happening now and people becoming virtual. I joined EXP last year, and this entire year prepared me for this. Guess what? I've been operating this way anyways. So. <laughs> The changes is my normal way of doing things for the last 12 months. So this has actually been great. While people are resisting it and don't like it and they're used to being in an office and driving in and operating out of a building, I've adapted pretty quickly. I mean, it took a little while for me to adapt and the changes and learn the new stuff. However, now I'm up and running. Now things are flowing. Now everything is is good. You know, I've been waiting for this. And Denny can agree with me. He's an investor also is we've been waiting for this market for a while. And it's in these markets where we make a ton of money and you guys have to be ready. Yes. Yeah. uh, I'm actually pretty excited about that aspect of it. I mean, I've always said that realtors should be investors as well. Like, I don't quite understand why if you're in the business and you understand pricing and you're actually doing transactions, like you're telling me you never stumble across an opportunity that just looks too good to to pass up. Well, those opportunities are literally going to be on every street corner now. Like in the past, in the last couple of years, competition was up, inventory was low, prices were up. Like it didn't matter if it was on market or a wholesaler, unless your neighbor happened to just go into foreclosure or your friend's grandmother died and they didn't want the house. Like unless it fell in your lap, there weren't really that many deals to be had. But this market, when everyone's running scared, when prices are down, is the best time to buy homes, not just, you know, to fix and flip, but to buy and hold too. Uh, one of the good things about a depressed market 
is that labor prices come down too because the contractors I called last week that were too busy to to do the the jobs I wanted them to do now there's going to be five of them that need work the all the material costs go down because when building when things stop building well then there's wood and nails and screws and everything else laying around fixtures that need to be sold so Vinny you're right on the money like if you don't know how to take advantage of a down market as an investor um, that's probably at the height of, that should be the top priority. You, you need to learn how to shift your business as an agent to work with short sales and, and when, when prices are going down and you need to learn how to take advantage of a market as an investor, because those are going to be two really big opportunities in terms of EXP, Rob, my email, text message, phones, uh, all the people who over the last, you know, six to 12 months have said, you know, not really been sure, like, do I need my office? Do I need my, you know, uh, front desk staff? Do I need this? Do I need that? And they were kind of, uh, you know, holding on to, I had this, uh, uh, this really funny conversation with my daughter, uh, one of her, she's six, one of her friends mailed her a letter. And I said, yeah, honey, you might be the last generation to get one of those. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, to actually get a piece of paper written and sent to your mailbox, because that's yesterday's news. Like now we communicate with text and email, like there's really no need to mail that. Right. So these people that were holding on to, you know, pigeon carrier service are going to finally have to let go and send an email and do things digitally. So my inbox is flooded with people who are like, you know what, I want to revisit this whole EXP thing just because as we're kind of all saying the same thing, like, 10 years ago, Glenn Sanford had this vision of creating a completely virtual brokerage, not a low service, low guidance, low accountability, low support, low tech, low help. No, high tech, high service, high accountability, high training, high touch, high everything. So it's a full service brokerage. It's just done in, you know, with modern technology. And that's not changing. Uh, virtual is not going away. It's growing. And live video in terms of a marketing platform for business is not going anywhere. It's growing. So if you need two takeaways from today, EXP aside, like those are the two things that you need to focus on in this shifting market. Absolutely. And some things that you guys said that were critical, let's, uh, let, um, let me put the, uh, the stock market in comparison. A savvy investor in the stock market, a savvy investor doesn't want the stock market to stay stagnant or barely rise. They don't like that. They want it to go up and down, up and down. Because when you have lots of changes, you can make a lot of money in the stock market. In the real estate industry, if the real estate industry is slowly going up and going up, which is great. We've had that for a number of years. It helps the, the average investor out there. It helps the average homeowner out there. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't create a lot of new energy. Well, since we have, we're going to have a little bit of a correction, I don't think it's going to be anywhere close to what we had in 08 because our fundamentals are still strong. But we're going to have a correction, and then we're going to have it come back, and so there's going to be a lot of money made. So if you're positioned well with your clients and customers, if you're positioned well with your tools and technology and your calling and your, your, your scripts, if you're positioned well with bringing value to the consumers and then the company that you're with can support you in this environment, then you're going to be able to be very successful in this uh, in this more new market moving forward. So we're actually excited. We're looking forward to it. And uh, we have, like Denny said, we have a lot of calls from agents calling us all over saying, hey, Rob, you know, I mentioned the EXP. We kind of talked about it. I heard about it. But, but uh, now it's getting more and more uh, prevalent. It's getting more and more relevant. So uh, let's talk more. And we're having more phone calls and Zoom calls than we've had in a long time because of that. So, guys, uh, thank you. I want to thank everybody for being on this call, for coming out and joining us. And thank Benny and Denny for, uh, for uh, being a part of this. And, and uh, also, if you have an interest in learning more about EXP Realty, get back with the person that invited you on this. And let's get you some more information. Let's That's get you private. some videos on it. Let's get you a private talk. Get on the phone with us. We'll be happy to help get you more information about this because it really is changing how real estate is done in this market. And don't forget, if you want a free access to our world training uh, in the in the cloud, and uh, get back with the person that invited you, let's get you a free two-week pass to the world so that you can be a part of that training. No matter what company you're with, you'll pick up some amazing information 
that can help you to change your real estate career. So thanks everybody for coming on this week. I've just popped up a, a link to those of you who have come by uh, the, my LinkedIn post. Uh, you know, come and join us uh, at uh, our mastermind there, uh, real estate mastermind slash networking group for the 21st century. Um, and, uh, you know, call, text, email me, um, you know, just call me on the phone, um, yeah, direct message me, direct message me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, you know, I'd love to help you and, uh, you know, connect you with other training like this. Um, and even give you a free, uh, link to our, uh, EXP world where we have 50 hours of live training every week. So, uh, thanks so much for tuning in and, uh, catch you on the next one.